The main features, probably the most used features, I'll say, for um, for people. And I really do want to try and stay kind of at the beginner level or kind of introductory. So if you're starting to use these, these features that I'm going to show are probably ones that you want to uh, consider or you should be aware of. The zooming, the ability to zoom on these charts. And if I'm hovering over the price axis and I'm just using my scroll wheel on my mouse. If you're on a laptop, basically just scroll. And to widen this or narrow it, just get over the, um, the background of the chart and do the same thing with the uh, scroll wheel. So you can tighten it up or widen it out. Some guys, uh, some traders really want to just see real, you know, real big and they're only focused on today and they're just watching these auctions occur. Others want to see it, you know, a little more traditional scrunched up and that's the way that is. And you can always get it back to normal, the auto scale by um, double clicking on the price axis. Hovering over a letter, notice it shows data, open, high, low, close, and volume. That's helpful when you're trying to maybe find a low or a high on a bracket. You can hover over that. Notice in the little pop-up, I don't know if you can see it on your screen, but in the top left corner of the uh, little gray box that's popped up, it says M, and that means that's M bracket. Okay, that's just so you know what bracket you're hovering over and it gives you the data for that, even including how much volume traded in that bracket. Hovering over a letter and then left click will bring up a menu and I can split the profile and splitting breaks it out like the candlestick chart So over time. So it, it just, instead of having it compressed where they're stacked, where the TPOs are stacked on themselves, it widens it out. So really you can think of this almost as like a candlestick chart. Notice the shape, notice the shape of this looks very similar to this. That's why I have this over here. I wanted you to see, I want you to make the connection. It's all the same data. It's just how it's represented. And when you split it, um, it allows you to look at it a little bit more like a candle, but you still, you still have these letters. And then to unsplit, left click on the letter and you can go down to remove, uh, re well, undo split or remove all splits and merges. So if you've done, if you've split multiple profiles, you can just do it in one click, get them all back to the standard, more the traditional traditional way. Now, a little more advanced use, but I'll show it is the ability to break break a profile apart. So it's not just a single profile, but it's multiple ones. And you may want to do that when uh, there's a significant change uh, and or it's breaking out. So maybe when it was breaking out here in I, you want to split that, split the profile going forward to see how it's how it's building. So if I left click, I can say split it letter. And so notice it took the profile and took everything from I onward and created its own little profile and left the morning, the initial balance and all this congestion, this, this uh, chop. And I can remove, I'm gonna undo that split. So there's, I can see this price action then I can see this kind of separate. That's a nice feature. That's, that's um, not, not everybody's gonna use that. That may be a little more advanced, but it's a very nice feature to have. I'm gonna click the gear, the little gear and that'll open up the settings. And so you can see these are, these are all the settings on a single screen. I'm not gonna cover all this, but um, I want you to know, uh, at least see, see where you can get in and make these changes. Um, one of the big ones here is the volume profile. Do you see I have this checkbox enabled. By having it enabled, it, it obviously displays it on the chart. But if you just wanted to see the TPO profiles and not have the volume profiles show, there you go. It actually allows you to get a little more on the chart too because it's not trying to make up for that added width on the chart. 
Uh, I'm going to go back to the gear. And value area. Now I'm displaying it. I told you it's normally 70%, roughly one standard deviation. Um, but if you didn't want to see it and you just kind of wanted to clean the chart up even further, so that's a little more of a pure play in terms of the profile right there, the TPO. Um, nothing wrong with doing it this way. Um, but it is nice to, to uh, have these other things on there if you want to use them for reference and learn. Um, initial balance, interval letters. So two is normal, the first two brackets. But obviously, you can customize that if you want. And that uh, I would highly recommend just leaving it at two. Um, that's the standard, but you know, play you can play with that. When I come in in the morning, my I want to see the 24 hour profile um, and then get a feel for how that relates to the prior day's action. And uh, then I'll remove the 24 hour and just show the RTH. Here's a chart that I built that shows this is today's RTH action, and then this was the overnight from last night. So this is a really cool feature of the software. If you, um, and here's my settings. I'm going to click the gear, and you can add multiple sessions. You can add more than two. Um, think of a session as a profile. Each individual TPO profile that you want to see um, for a period of time could be a session. So you could build multiple sessions out. Heck, you could have one for the morning session, the midday or lunchtime session, and then the close if you wanted to do it that way. However, when you do that, you need to build them kind of like this. Uh, the way I've start with the overnight and then notice I have my overnight start at five o'clock and go to 9.30 in the morning. I'm Eastern Standard Time. And then I have my day session start right at 9.30 and go till 4 o'clock. I, I didn't choose 4.15 or 4.30. I just, I just uh, for me, RTH is 9.30 to 4 o'clock. That's, that's how I, I do it. Again, you can do it however you want. Um, and so by setting it this way, and notice you can choose the start letter of each profile. So I like my RTH session to start actually with letter A. Um, and then I just let this one start with N because I think it's the next letter in the progression based on uh, the profile. So if I click Save, you can see what it does. So here's overnight and here's day. And even take it one step further, you can even color code. I could color code my night session so it's maybe a little more clear now when I look at the profile, you can see here's RTH session, RTH, and then this was this represents the overnight, the overnight action. Kind of covered what I wanted to with respect to um, the settings. There's obviously a lot of them. The big ones are going to be the uh, volume profile and then the sessions if you want, if you want it that way.